Welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center. We are excited because it's fluff time. It's, it, fluff time comes around every time this, this time of year, and uh, we enjoy it. Union Square just turns into a big, massive ball of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to be joined in the studio today with uh, two of the lead organizers of this event. Uh, we have Jessica Eschleman from Union Square Main Streets, the executive director. And we have Kate Stinchcomb, who is the program manager over at Union Square Main Streets. So welcome to you both. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we're so happy to be here. And happy fluff. And happy, happy fluff. fluff. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about fluff. And uh, so Jessica, let's start off with you. Um, what, why fluff? First of all, I think that's, that's the burning question on everybody's mind. Why fluff? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, what's, what's new about fluff? Okay, great questions, and I always appreciate a chance to talk about this because people are curious, like, why would Somerville really blow up fluff to this extent? First, it's a very Somervillian thing to do, I would say, but there's actual some history there that mm -hmm. we like to share with everybody as well, and that is marshmallow fluff was invented right here in Union Square. Right. And so that was 1917, and it was invented by a gentleman named Archibald Query, who invented it in his kitchen before selling it to the folks who now have a factory in Lynn, Massachusetts. Um, and I mention that because sometimes we take, um, we have to defend our fluff rights, so to speak, because folks think that maybe this festival should happen in Lynn. Right. But this brings us back to why we celebrate it. So marshmallow fluff was invented here, and for Union Square Main Streets in the Somerville Arts Council, uh, we produced this festival in, in partnership with those guys. We are able to celebrate the spirit of innovation that's so strong throughout Somerville as a whole. A number of things have been invented here. There's a spirit of innovation that's traditionally been very strong, but up to this day with folks like Greentown Labs and Right Hand Robotics and Artisans Asylum. So we get to showcase the spirit of our square and the businesses that are here as well. Like a, a great link between Somerville past and Somerville present mm -hmm. and leading into Somerville future. And uh, to organize a festival around food around that, that that's very imaginative and it sounds like it's quite a challenge. Um, well, it's a challenge in a lot of fun, sticky ways. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we really like to do is um, involve local businesses as much as possible. And so I think you highlighting how rich the Union Square community is in terms of food destinations is really on point. Kate's going to talk a little bit about some of the ways that we celebrate food in just a bit in terms of the programming. Um, but absolutely, we want to tell the story of our square with this festival at every opportunity. Yeah. Can I tell you about this year's theme? Yes. I'd love to do that because, um, so the festival itself is called the What the Fluff Festival, which you can see I'm wearing a t-shirt from a number of years ago. Classic fluff. Classic fluff. <laughs> and every year we have a different theme. Um, Kate's wearing last year's uh, Fluff the 13th, so you get the sense that this was the 13th annual. This year, in its 14 years, we are really celebrating Somerville being one of the most culturally rich cities in the nations. Did you know that more than 50 languages are spoken in our schools? I did not know that. More than 50 languages in um, all of the schools throughout Somerville. Mm. So we are using the theme Fluff Travels, All Roads Lead to Fluff, as a way to celebrate all the neighbors who have made their way from other places to Union Square and now call Somerville, or Somerville as a whole, their home. So whether that is Haiti or Brazil, El Salvador or Portugal or beyond, this year it's all about celebrating, celebrating our neighbors. Very nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Um, and so what can we expect this year? Um, I, I mean, we'll go into detail with Kate, but you know, maybe there's, you can fill us in on some of the changes. Um, absolutely. Past festivals. And I can fill in what I'm able to right sure. now. Sure. So uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret in case you didn't know. There's some construction happening in Union oh, Square. Oh, yeah? Just I didn't, I didn't know. Just a little, Just a little bit. bit of it. Um, and the city is such a crucial partner for our ability um, to be able to present this festival of this scope and scale. About 20,000 people come to Fluff Festival each wow. year. Wow. Um, so we have been in contact with the folks at City Hall and beyond to talk about impacts related to construction. Up until earlier this month, it looked like the construction crews were going to be moving on a timeline where there wouldn't be significant impacts mm -hmm. and Fluff Festival would be as uh, laid out in a way that people are familiar with. 
uh, earlier this month, it's August now, uh, there was a public meeting held and it became clear that there's some modifications to the construction timeline, which are going to impact significantly where the festival is actually happening. Okay. So for those who have attended, you know it's traditionally on and around the plaza. And this year we've had to explore alternative locations very close nearby in Union Square. We are eagerly awaiting the final approvals from City Hall to be able to announce where that will be. Okay. Um, as festival producers, I'm sure you can imagine that it's a critical detail yeah. that we are um, excited to share with the public and also that's pretty important to our planning mm -hmm. and promotional efforts. Uh, but on the staff side, you know, we think every day about what businesses like Somerville Media Center and others that are in the thick of this construction site, what you're having to mitigate every day. Mm -hmm. And so we are just having to act accordingly and be flexible. But we're really excited to experiment with some new layouts. Um, again, we'll be able to keep people updated on our website, flufffestival.com, in our newsletter and on our social media channels. But I can share this, even if you were to stroll to the plaza, um, the areas that we're looking to host the programming in, you would be able to at least hear them, I would imagine. Okay. So very, very close to the plaza. More information as soon as we're able to confirm. All right, but still, very much a Union Square festival. This is all about Union Square. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. And so, Kate, um, maybe you can fill us in now on some details about Fluff, uh, maybe who some of the performances might yeah. be by, or some of the food vendors, or any yeah. anything new. I'd love the opportunity to talk to you about some of the very fun activities that we have planned sure. for y'all. Um, although I wish that I could take credit for all of these wonderful activities, we actually mm -hmm. do have a fluff committee that's made up of about 10 volunteers who have been meeting since January to plan this festival. Um, so a huge shout out to all of those folks that are involved. We are going to be having a lot of um, multiple performance areas with lots of live music this year. So get ready to come on down, get your groove on, come dance with us. That's going to be very exciting. And our um, music this year is going to reflect a number of different cultural demographics as well, which is exciting. Yeah, I'll yeah. touch on a couple of those. Um, so we really see these performance areas as a way, again, to tell that story of our neighborhood. And so we have confirmed a Nepalese performer that I'm really excited about. Shaiman Nepali is his name, and I understand that he tours pretty extensively, so we're really excited about having him secured for the Fluff Festival here. Um, we're in conversations right now with some Portuguese performers. Um, Mariachi will be returning as well. Very fun. Um, we are having, uh, our headliner is confirmed as Crush Factory. And Crush Factory has a local residency at Bull McCabe's Pub and is a real good mix of soul and funk and hip hop. So really fun, uh, high energy spirit to end the day on. Um, John Mandy will be returning with Drum and Wellness. And this is the participatory drum circle that debuted last year and the community just responded so favorably. We're gonna bring John back. We don't often repeat the same uh, performers year to year, but this was just such a, a wonderful way to get hands on in terms of the entertainment, he'll be back with us Excellent. as well. Excellent, very yeah. good. And another one of our performance areas that we love, we call the shenanigan stage. <laughs> so our very own Archibald Query comes out, Archibald who invented fluff, of course, um, and hosts some really wild and wacky games. That's why we call it the shena shenanigan stage. Um, for example, we have fluff jousting, where we have two people who take pool noodles, dip each um, end of them into fluff, and then ever so friendly and pleasantly try to get each other off of a very small balance beam. We can, have can I just share with you how hard it is to get event insurance when you have fluff <laughs> jousting? Uh, <laughs> surprising, actually. The fluff jousting is a sticking point, if you will. Um, we also have fluff musical chairs, so one lucky person at the end of each round gets to sit themselves in a chair full of fluff, so everyone's oh. kind of covered in it by the end. All right. <laughs> um, and we also have fluff hairdos, which I think is very fun. Um, we invite the community to come out and use fluff and peanut butter to create their most fashion-forward hairstyles. <laughs> um, not something I would recommend for your day-to-day -day work life, but yeah. very good for being out on the town on Fluff Festival. And this is actual fluff and actual peanut butter. It sure All is. Right. Yeah, it really is. We conclude the day with that activity because clearly you just need to find the shower after that. So <laughs> it's sort of the pinnacle, I That's would right. say, of the shenanigan yeah. stage. Right. And the shenanigan stage is really special, I think, in all of our hearts. We actually had last year, and I'm not making this up, a real-life fluff proposal 
on that stage, which was so sweet and beautiful. And our own Archibald Query is going to the wedding this That's year. That's right. Okay. That's right. That's and it was really, fluff jousting where the proposal it happened. It was fluff jousting, yes. All right. <laughs> so it's really sweet to see how the community has embraced fluff as an important part of their lives. Um, another really fun activity we have is the cooking contest. So we were talking about celebrating food in Union Square. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for community members to come up with their, mo their own inventive and innovative recipes that include fluff as an ingredient. And the cooking contest is especially near and dear to my heart because my first week of work last year, I'm not sure if you know this, was the week of the fluff festival, and this was my project. All right. So I love the cooking contest. <laughs> um, we introduced a new element last year of having a live tasting. So we are doing that again this year where we have celebrity judges come and taste our finalist um, recipes. And we're taking that is taking place at the Comedy Studio this year, which we're really excited to be working with them. Over at Bow Market. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Over at Bow Market. And um, we have four different categories that folks uh, can win in. We have most retro slash traditional, most innovative, best future chef, which is my favorite because that's all of our entries of our little chefs are 13 years and younger, and then overall grand prize winner. And I've been really impressed with all of the incredible recipes that have come out. We had fluff sushi, we had mm -hmm. fluff mochi that made wow. it into the finalist round. Yet we do a preliminary tasting with judges who pick two finalists for each category, then the live tasting at the comedy studio, and then Mayor Curtitoni will announce the winners on the, the stage later. And right. what is the grand prize? The grand prize actually is a very special tour of the Jerky Mower factory where they created fluff. And y'all, I like cannot even believe. I've never seen so much fluff in one area <laughs> at one time in my life. We got to go on this tour last year. It was incredible. And I also would love to share that the owners of the factory actually make the grand prize recipe themselves and try it out. So last year's winner made fluff Scottish tea cakes, and they really actually liked it. And they said the recipe was easy for them to make, which oh, was really nice. Oh, very nice. And for the first time ever, that recipe was put on the Turkey Mower official fluff website. Okay. So yeah. there's some serious bragging rights involved. Yeah. There sure are. There sure are. Um, also back again, we're going to have parkour. Have you parkour? Do you know what parkour is? I do. I'm aware parkour. of parkour. I have not parkoured myself. Though. You should. You should come <laughs> out on September 21st in parkour. So for those that might not be aware, parkour is playing and moving through obstacles like in a man-made environment. So thinking about what you would do on the playground on a jungle gym as a child, um, you can do in real life here in Union Square. We're working with Blake Evett over at Parkour Generations, and we're excited to have him back. Um, initially, when I thought about parkour being at the festival, I was like, oh, parkour. I mean, I'm certainly not cool enough to parkour. I'm not athletic enough to parkour. But actually, Blake and his team have done a really mm -hmm. good job about being able to have these obstacles that can adapt to any one person's age or skill level so everyone can parkour. Mm -hmm. So it really Very is cool. a community event um, to bring these folks together, which is really exciting. Um, for our younger fluff lovers, we have Midway Games. Um, this is where they can play fluff cornhole or fluff bowling. We have um, fluff ring toss. And when you play each of the games, you earn tickets that you can then take over to our prizes booth and redeem for a special prize. And I should mention that all of these activities mm -hmm. are free. So as Jessica likes to say, it's free to play, it's free to win. Um, my favorite prize last year were the sticky skeleton hands. So personally, I'm hoping they make a comeback, but we'll see. <laughs> I've got lots of fun things there. And then another favorite activity that we have, um, I like to say, how daring are your taste buds? <laughs> so Dave, tell me how you feel about this. Okay. Would you ever be willing to try mustard, tuna, pickles, and fluff on a cracker? Hmm. I think it depends on the proportions. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I'd be willing to try it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so we have our Fear Factor booth where you can try really wild combinations yeah. of foods with fluff. Um, last year, that's a real combination we had last year. We also had ketchup and salsa and tuna and fluff. And we had um, Lucky Charms and Mandarin Oranges and Fluff, which honestly that I thought was pretty good. good. That I thought sounds it was good. good. That one was good. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised at the number of incredibly brave summer villains who come out and to participate in the Fear Factor, also free, um, to try those really fun combinations. Um, we're also going to see the return of a lot of really fun pop-up activities. Mm -hmm. So for those that might have joined us for the holiday stroll in December, 
Part of that, you would have come across a fire pit with, you know, marshmallow toasting and trampolines. So that's Culture House. It's going to be back with us for uh, the Fluff Festival. The trampolines are making a comeback. All right. So people can come and jump and be with us. Probably recommend you come and jump before you get your fluff treats, of course. But or I don't know, maybe good way to to like use the excess energy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jump anytime. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and so we also will have you know a lot of really wonderful food vendors that are with us, providing both sweet and savory treats. And um, we'll have lots of craft vendors as well. And of course, you know, for those that want to take the spirit of fluff home with them, we'll have your fluff stuff. So come and get your t-shirts or we have tote bags, which are great at the farmer's market, I must say. Beanies and hats and, and a little bit of everything for everyone. All right. Yeah, it sounds like it does have, it truly has something for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to add about, about fluff? Uh, well, I'd love to do a special shout out of thanks and appreciation and celebration. Um, so each year we work with a local artists to create the design like you're seeing on the t-shirts. Um, and this year we have a we have a really special artist that we're working with, which has been a lot of fun to uh, get to learn about his talents and his stories. So I want to do a shout out to Brunel Morogio and Sorry, Brunel, I'm working on that pronunciation. <laughs> um, Brunel has come to this area from Costa Rica. He's been working um, over at Forklift Catering, which is a business that had been in the square for a number of years. And he's interested in getting back to his full-time work as being a professional artist. So cool. he has been contracted this year to do this year's design, and we can't wait for you guys to see that. Yeah, we can't wait to see that. Hitting the streets pretty soon. Very cool. All right. Well, we, we can't wait for Fluff. Uh, I'm sure you all can't wait for fluff, and I think all of Somerville just can't wait for what the fluff. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to get involved, can we talk about that Absolutely. to wrap up? Yeah, totally. Um, there's a couple different ways to get involved. The first I would say is if you're interested in giving back, more than 100 volunteers are needed to make this festival possible. So we have all kinds of fun, sticky or not sticky opportunities there. Um, so helping out for a couple of hours could be a fun way to enjoy um, both giving back and the festival itself. So you can get more information about that at unionsquaremain.org or flufffestival.com. Um, we also, of course, need folks to submit their recipes for the cooking contest. So really excited to see what interesting recipes we're going to have for this year. Um, I realize I'm not entirely sure when this will hit the air, but there are opportunities for nonprofits to participate for free. So if you're a community group and you're trying to get your story out there, we invite you to be part of Fluff Fest. Um, we do need to hear from community groups, I believe, by August 19th. 19th. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll just put that out there. And we honestly are so excited about this year's theme, Fluff Travels. And so we're really looking forward to seeing what people are going to share with us on social media. So tagging us on Facebook and sharing your pictures of fluff all over the world. Um, Jessica and her son actually visited Spain and took a fluff jar with them and took a picture there. You got the first hashtag this year. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's um, right. We just recently um, were shared a picture of a, a, a young girl in Texas, I think, who they don't have fluff as readily available down there, received a tub of fluff and was so thrilled. Uh -huh. um, so we would love to see those posts on Facebook. Tag us at, you know, Fluff Festival on, and also on Instagram. Very, yeah. very good. All, very good information here. Um, we just encourage you to interact in all these different ways, uh, going to the website, unisquaremainstreets.org or flufffestival.com. That's right. And uh, get out there to the What the Fluff Festival. Have we said, you said the date quickly, but let's just remind everybody that that's Saturday, September 21st. Rain date is Sunday the 22nd, and it's from 3 to 7 p.m. All right. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Kate. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Dave. Thanks so much.